If you are somebody who is mastering your own mixes, this trick is for you. Especially if the kick drum is a very important element in your mixes. This trick addresses when the low end disappears with compression and how to compress and get that stability while keeping the low end alive and interesting. This trick is something that we sometimes use and we work with mastering so we do it on the whole mix and it works really great. But you could also potentially put this on the stereo bus and kind of mix into it. My name is Sofia, I have been working with mastering for many years and have this channel and also a mastering company together with Thomas. We have also been educating at Swedish universities and higher education on the subject of mastering since 2009 and now lately we have taken this education to YouTube. So the root problem can be that you want to use compression on the mix and you want to do that maybe to get some glue and you also get that bounce so the compression is triggered by the kick drum and then the whole mix starts bouncing with the kick drum in a very musical way. But with the compression the mix may sound too thin or the low end sounds too restricted. So when you switch between your original mix and your master and I would recommend to do that loudness matched even though you get that bounce in the master, the kick drum may be much quieter so that the original mix actually sounds more fat and full when you compare them like that. So it doesn't feel like a, an improvement. So there is one solution that you can try and that is to add low end before or after the compression. This might restore some of that lost bass so you can get that musical bounce while also maintaining the energy or loudness of the kick. But it may also still sound too thin when doing this or too compressed. So you kind of get there, but not all the way. I can also mention something about the side chain here. If you use a low cut filter in the side chain, then as you take away the low end, the low end won't trigger the compressor anymore. And this will reduce how much the bass can influence the compression. So you may use this, for example, when the low end makes the whole mix pump in a non-musical way or something like that. There are other use cases as well. My point is that what you have in the side chain will influence what triggers the compressor, but then the full mix is still being compressed. So that's how a normal compressor is set up. The reason why I mentioned this is that we kind of want the opposite of that. We want to keep uh, the full mix in the side chain so that the low end can trigger the compressor and we get that musical bounce. And then the trick that we're going to talk about is to reduce the amount of actual compression in the low end. So this will give that musical bounce while also keeping the loudness of the low end. And this is often the best solution to the problem. We're going to use Kotelnikov GE from TDR to do this. This is because we need a feature that's not very common in compressors. Actually, I haven't seen it in any other compressor, although there are other ways to do this using a multiband compressor. We will talk about that later in the video. Note that you do need the GE version, the paid version, since this feature that we're going to use is not available in the free version of Kotelnikov. And uh, also, I want to say that we're not affiliated with TDR. <laughs> we just like their products and we use them ourselves. And somehow when we show you uh, tricks and things like that uh, about mastering, it's kind of natural for us to just show this on things that we're using. And also then you can see we've been working with mastering for so many years. Thomas started in 2000. I started in 2006. And we've had our own company since 2009. So maybe it's interesting for some of you to know what we are using. And we use, we mastered thousands of records yeah, using these things. But yeah, we do use Kotelnikov uh, in our mastering chain. So now we go to this trick. So you set up the compressor for compressing the full mix. I have exaggerated this now in order to demonstrate this. You would normally have something like up to 1 dB of gain reduction in a mastering situation. But it's really difficult to demonstrate using such small differences. And my goal here is to make you hear this and then you can use this trick and fine tune it yourself. Also, another thing I want to say is that this material is just loops in GarageBand. So this is not really a track. It's just something to demonstrate on. So now we're going to enable the FDR feature. FDR is short for frequency dependent ratio. You press the edit button to adjust it. In this view, we can set different ratios for different frequencies. To do this, we will first select the shape 
and we can choose between two shelving types, two band types and a special wide band type called EL curve. And EL stands for equal loudness and has to do with the Fletcher Munson curves and this feature is based on that, but we will not go deeper into that right now. Uh, let's go with the shelf B type here. Now we can use this uh, shape to reduce the ratio for certain frequencies. So here I have set it to remove the compression completely for the lowest frequencies. And then gradually we can restore the original ratio for higher frequencies. So the compressor will react to the full signal in the sidechain as usual, but the lowest bass will not be affected at all by the compression now. And here at 150 Hz the ratio is effectively halved. So for the mids and upwards, the ratio is whatever we have set it up here, uh, which is uh, two to one in this case. And yeah, that's the trick. <laughs> now we can get all the good things that we're looking for when using compression, but we can let the low end pass through uncompressed. Uh, let's listen to the difference it makes for this mix. As you can probably hear, the version with the FDR enabled also sounds more bass heavy, which makes sense. And this is exactly what happens. If I exaggerate the amount of compression even more, then you can hear that the low end stays at the same level, but the rest of the mix gets gain reduced. So the more gain reduction we use, the more bass there will be relative to the rest of the signal. In normal cases, you will only use maybe one dB of gain reduction at most, as I said. So then this will be more like a nudge uh, in a deeper and fatter direction. And mastering is a lot about nudging the mix in the right direction using one or like several small improvements. So that's also why it's kind of hard to demonstrate these things because it kind of takes a little bit of training to hear these small improvements. It's very good to exaggerate from the beginning to just hear it. That's usually what I do. When I get a new trick or something, Thomas says, come and listen to this or come and listen to this plugin or something, then I will want to know the artifacts of it and exaggerate it so I can zoom in my hearing on that and really hear it. Yeah, so I think that's a good way to learn how to hear things. We can also use another filter type, for example, the Bell A type. Here I have set it up so that the mids will be compressed, but both the low end and the high end will pass through without compression. So let's have a listen to this. The FDR version here has both more low end and more high end than the regular version. So the compressor will approach a mid scooped sound with more gain reduction. Let's hear it if we exaggerate it now. With more sensible settings, this can be very useful for nudging and muddy mix into the direction of a more open and full sound. Also, we can note that just like looking at this almost as an EQ curve is very wide. So that means that it's going to be more subtle. One thing to note here is that it might 
seem like you could use a dynamic EQ or multiband compressor instead, and why not just compress the mids? And the important difference is that a dynamic EQ band or a band in a multiband compressor will usually just react to the signal within that band. But when using Kotelnikov in this way, the amount of compression depends on the full mix. So this can make a big difference for music where the low end is important for the groove and the rhythm and you want the whole mix to bounce with that. If you want the compressor to bounce along with the kick drum, for example, then you want the compressor to react to the low end as well. And I think that's the like most important thing in this video. In, for example, Multiplicity from DMG Audio, you can do this. Uh, so we're going to have a look at that as well. So here I have set up a three band compressor. The low and high bands are not compressing anything. And the mid band is set up to compress similar to the previous example we had in Kotelnikov GE. The trick here is to set the source of the side chain of this band to wide. And this will make this band listen to the full mix instead of just the signal within this band. So now we can get a similar type of effect as we did previously. As always, when processing things in mastering, we make sure that uh, we do make an actual improvement and not just making everything louder. And if we try to loudness match the output of the compressor so that it sounds as loud as the bypass version, then it will be much easier to hear what's going on without loudness bias. And of course, if we're like trying to have like a fatter and fuller bass, mentioning those Fletcher Manson curves as well. If you're listening to a louder version, the bass is going to sound fatter and fuller. So because that's the effect we want, we really want to take the loudness out of the equation here so that we can really identify when we get there. Uh, because that otherwise it's impossible to know what comes from the difference in loudness and what comes from the what the Kotelnikov is doing. As I said, you can also like mix into this and as Thomas said in the gain staging video, one of his points was to just have it at unity gain in your mastering chain or stereo mix bus when you're mixing so that you can just like uh, click it in and out easily. I hope you got something out of this video. Good luck with your current projects and thank you for watching.